Treasury Star Parade. <laughs> Produced under the personal direction of William A. Bacher, with David Brookman and the Treasury Orchestra and Chorus, and Joseph Shulcroft, one of America's most distinguished actors, currently starring in the Broadway hit Uncle Harry, in a vivid and exciting drama written especially for the Treasury Star Parade by one of the radio's outstanding dramatists, Milton Geiger's My Favorite Nazi. <laughs> I like Nazis. There is a realistic utilitarian practicality about a Nazi that precisely suits my purpose and my tastes. I like them. And I like the kind of talk about them that runs somewhat like this. Oh, I don't know. Nazis are no worse than lots of political parties. I say if we can get Hitler out of there, kill him or make him resign, we could make peace with Germany. Goering would be fine. Him or anyone else but Hitler. I wouldn't go for Goebbels, but anyone else wouldn't be half there. If I had something to say, I'd make peace with Germany in a minute if, say, uh, what's his name were in there? Uh, you know, the Gestapo guy, uh, Himmler. Heinrich Himmler. Himmler. Heinrich Himmler. Now there's a man for you. Shrewd, efficient, exact, proficient, a man with vision, precision, systematic, alert, vigilant, calm, on his toes, not inert. Yes, a man of decision who makes eins, zwei, drei, the dapper inspector of Geheime Staatspolizei, the Gestapo. In short, my favorite Nazi. <laughs> Forgive me for growing so lyrical. I liked Heinrich Himmler from the very start. From that first time I spotted him in a German beer keller, I thought, 19-year-old stripling, chinless and weak-eyed though he is, he will bear my closest scrutiny. <laughs> yes. Peter, another beer. Oh. Uh, just a moment. You, my young friend, will you have a beer also? I, uh, well, <laughs> well, yes, just a little one. Ada, one beer for me and one for the boy. I shouldn't say I was a boy, I'm 19. 19, a man is fit to take part in German affairs. Yes, very reassuring, having 19-year-old political dabblers one year after a war. That makes serious thinkers wonder where we are going and what next. You work? I, uh... I'm soon going to the Munich Agricultural College. But do you work? In a factory, yes. Well, what do you do, boy? Come, speak up. Can't you be friendly? <laughs> I, uh... I make fertilizer. Fertilizer? <laughs> fertilizer? That's priceless. The lad makes fertilizer. <laughs> Don't we all, when we're gone the way of all mortal flesh? Don't we all? <laughs> Yes, that nameless companion of the beer killer was right. It was priceless that my Heinrich should manufacture, of all things, fertilizer, as you shall see. As you shall see. True enough, my Heinrich graduated from the Munich Agricultural School. How he loved the little greens and carrots and the gentle little creatures of the field. There, Tilda, there. <laughs> There's a fine hen. Pretty Tilda. <laughs> what a fuss you make over one solitary egg. There, there. A fine hobby, my little Heinrich, raising poultry. And how well you look among your feathered friends. Also chinless and weak of eye. Ah, but you have a mind and a purpose, Heinrich. It is good for killers to have a creative hobby. It preserves their balance, their sense of humor. It conditions them for more and cooler killing when the time comes. And now, what does a graduate of agriculture do in Germany of 1925? My name is Heinrich Himmler. I can prove my pure Aryan descent. I wish to join the storm troops. That is what a graduate of agriculture does in Germany of 1925. 
And what does a young recruit in the stormtroops do? I understand that Ernst Röhm has left the leadership of the stormtroops and so abandoned our leader, who is now organizing a personal corps, the Schutzstaffel. Good. My name is Heinrich Himmler. I can prove my pure Aryan descent. I was formerly a stormtrooper. I always admired Heinrich's skill at leaping from the losing bandwagon to the winning one. His, uh... <laughs> Kill at leaving a sinking ship for a sounder one, like any intelligent young rat worthy of his bait. Ah, but worthy. Please let me emphasize his worth, as you shall see. I am really very fond of our gentle Heinrich here. As my secretary, he is so orderly, so efficient at keeping the fires of the SS. Gregor Strasser of the SS lamenting Heinrich Himmler's one great drawback. But our gentle Heinrich is so mild, like a quiet little bookkeeper. I fear he'll not go very far, eh, Heinrich? <laughs> Mark well that schoolboy laugh, Gregor Strasser. You'll die one day with that laugh chuckling in your ear. Even though in 1929, all friendly and unsuspecting, you will say... It is my recommendation in consideration of Heinrich Himmler's exactitude and service that he be considered for the duty of leader of the Schutzstaffel. Success! Study at home on your free evenings. You too can be a killer. Don't follow. Lead. Uh, listen to a testimonial from my star pupil. Yesterday I kept the records of the SS. Today I lead that most powerful armed force in Germany. The end is not yet. And I owe it all to my friend and benefactor, Gregor Strasser. I think that someday he must die. <laughs> <laughs> the SS, the Schutzstaffel, Hitler's personal corps marches, and at its triumphal head, my favorite Nazi, Heinrich Himmler. Under my leadership, the SS must embrace these two vital principles. One. It is the first function of the SS to guard our Führer. Two. We must guard against all such subversive influences in the Reich as Jews, Freemasons, Catholics, all political priests, and in fact, all freethinkers. Christianity is to be regarded as a weakening influence in the Reich. What's the matter? Do you frown and disagree with my gentle Heinrich? He commands 100,000 black shirts. Do you command 100,000 black shirts at 34 years of age? No? Then be advised and withhold your sneers. Heinrich! Heinrich! What's this? Yes, my Führer. And Strom is back in Germany again. He is furious because the SS has displaced his armed rabble of star troops. There are over a million of them. But Ernst and his friends cause a ferment among them. You know what may happen. Yes, my Führer. Well, hey, hey, little. This is where I come in. And this is where I really come in. This will be sport in the dead of night. <laughs> what sport? Pounding on the doors of Germany in the dead of night. Crashing into privacy with the black shirts in the black of night. The dead of night. The dead. The dead. The dead of night. The night. The night. The night of death. June 30th, 1934. The night of the long night. The purge of blood. <laughs> Name of the Führer, open, open! The night, the night, the night of death. Ernst Röhm, you are under arrest for treason to our leader. The dead, the dead, the dead of night. Bravo and Schleicher, where is your husband? But he is busy at the moment. What is the trouble? What is this? What is the meaning of this? Kurt von Schleicher. This is the meaning of this. No! No, you must not shoot him now! Gregor Strasse, stand up. Heinrich. My gentle Heinrich. What? <laughs> Dead of night, 
Herrn Ström, there's your pistol. For your Führer and for your own honor, perform your duty. No, this I will not do for Adolf. Very well, Ernst. I will do it. Oh, night of scarlet majesty, of living scarlet flowing in the halls of Germany. All night the scarlet river bubbled and bubbled and rolled into the streets until the artful sewers were choked and higher and ever higher boiled the crimson current above the roofs, the steeples, and the topmost trees of Germany until at dawn. At dawn there was naught of good or honor in all Germany. Naught but a heaving sea of red on which a black steel helmet floated upside down. And in the earth, softened and enriched with blood, the Nazi heel sank deeper. Well done, Heinrich Himmler. Keep it up. But that, my good people, was only the beginning. Heinrich, the distinction within the ranks of the party which made the purse necessary makes another thing necessary. We need a secret police. See to it, Heinrich. Act. The Geheime Staatspolizei, the Gestapo. All enemies of the Reich will be rooted out of the party and confined to Sachsenhausen, Dachau, and selected stations. The concentration camp, or death on the dung heap. Again. More. Again, make him squirm, the swine. Oh, Excellency, Inspector. Yes, yes, what? A message from Frau Himmler at your villa. An epidemic among your chickens. <gasps> my chickens. My poor little chickens. Quick, my car. Bring my car around the front. Hurry, do you hear? Hurry. The hundreds of thousands that died. The hundreds of thousands. Uh, people, I mean. People, not chickens. Thus, my gentle Heinrich, the blushing butcher boy of Europe, blushing with the blood of Europe. Well, so far, so good. As you see, by and large, a capable young man, and who may, in time, succeed his leader. Uh, remember? I'd make peace with Germany in a minute if, say, uh, what's his name were in there? Uh, you know, the Gestapo guy. Himmler. Heinrich Himmler. Heinrich Himmler. <laughs> My favorite Nazi. A most conscientious killer. A super torquemada, assassin extraordinary. I need him. I appreciate him. I admire him. He's my ally, my harvester in Europe, behind the armies themselves, yes. Heinrich Himmler is by far my favorite Nazi. For I am dead. And Himmler is my henchman. And that is the nature of our enemy. He is ruthless, he is cruel, he is insatiate. He is not just Hitler whom we must destroy, but the whole Nazi way of life. We must work, we must fight, and we must save. We must save our money by investing as much as we possibly can every week or payday in United States war savings bonds, where it will fight side by side with every man in the front lines for our ultimate victory. Remember, every dollar you invest in war savings bonds and stamps, you are investing in the future security of America. This is your country. Keep it yours.